Welcome. In this video, we're going to show you an alternative way of selecting things. Here we have a situation where we're looking at some smoke. And this image was created in a unique way. To take pictures of this of smoke, it's not actually that hard. What you want to do is go out at night with something like an incense burner. And you want to light one of those sticks of incense because it makes a nice little fine point. And then the smoke is going to uh, rise up from it, right? And if you are outside at night and no lights on, not near any objects like trees or walls or fences or the outside of your house, and you kind of point up towards the sky, what you get is a flash on the smoke. So your camera will flash on the smoke, illuminating it. Now the things that's behind it, the stars, right, don't show up because we uh, are too far away for the light from the flash to touch them. So it ends up just illuminating the smoke and nothing else. Now for this particular image, I'm going to show you how to extract this from this document. Now we want to do this using uh, some new layers. So I'm going to start by dragging this layer down to the new layer icon and then I'm going to go into channels. Well, you know what? I'm going to turn off the background eye for the moment and then go over to channels and what you're looking for is the channel that looks best. Now what is channel? Well, if you are working with an RGB image, red, green, and blue, you're going to have a red channel and a green channel and a blue channel. And you're like, but all these are black and white. Well, the black and white represents the amount of each of those colors. Okay. So in this case, you know, they all have about similar values because this particular image is very uh, grayscale looking already. When you look at the whole thing, it's not very colorful. It does look a little more blue though. If you take a look, you have blue and the green and then red. And what you're looking for is the best looking of these. I think the red has too much noise, too many dots. Green's looking pretty good. Blue's looking worse because it's got too many dots. So I'm going to go with the green. Okay. So whichever one you find, you just want to duplicate that layer. So I have a green copy. It's um, a copy of that channel. Then what you want to do is move your mouse over the little layer uh, thumbnail here, the channel's thumbnail, and hold down control so that you get this little square on your hand. Then you tap and it selects that layer. Now you're looking at this and you're like, well, it didn't do a very good job selecting, but trust me, it did. Basically what it's done is it selected all the colors in here, but it hasn't uh, shown that with the marching ants because the marching ants just kind of show the end of the selection, not the entire selection. So what I'm going to do is switch back to RGB, go back to my layers panel, and now that I'm on this layer, I'm just going to add a mask. I'm just going to click the mask icon. And look, now I have an extracted layer. If you take a look at the mask for this, if I alt click the mask, doesn't that look familiar? That is the same as our original channel. All right. Some things in here are bothering me in that, uh, for example, out here, uh, I get, I'm getting some extra spots. There's a little... Uh, some type of a blur or a, a light or spark coming over here. So maybe I'll fix some of those things. So while I'm on the mask, and I'm still viewing the mask, make sure you're not just looking at the picture, make sure you're on the mask, viewing the mask. I'm going to switch to my burn tool. And what I'm going to do is burn some highlights. I'm going to make my burn tool a little bigger. And right now the exposure is pretty slow. Let's see if I can turn that up some. So there we go. So now it's getting rid of that spot up there. And you can basically work your way around. It's kind of like painting, but not really. Um, you can use it to clean up parts. All right, I'm going to make my brush bigger and maybe get some more over here out. Okay. So that's basically cleaning up that image. Now, I could have chosen any of the uh, channels in my channel list to create this image. But in my case, I like this one. Now, I want to get some of these to go away because I don't like the fact that it's coming to a crisp edge and being cut off. So I'm going to paint a lot at the bottom here to try and make these parts go away some. Just kind of work this until I get a nice 
dark region. All right, maybe a little bit in here. Okay, so now that I have this, how it looks, let's still go see what it looks like on the blue. So here's the normal layer all ready to go. Now, this is a way better method for something like water or, or other clouds, things like that, that are semi-transparent objects. This works great, okay? You do have to have a pretty consistent background, though. And so let's go ahead and take this and see what it looks like when we drag it into another image. I'm going to move into my Move tool, and I'm going to drag this into my other image. I'm going to click in the middle of the image and drag it up to the aquarium I already have open here. And I'm going to hold, hold, hold. I haven't let go yet. And then I'm going to let go. So now you can see it here, and you can see it's already, already looking pretty good. I could have also brought this in in another way as well. I am seeing some grays in here, and I'm going to show you how to get rid of those in a second. But let me go ahead and just take this another way. I'm going to go back to my smoke image, and I'm going to double click the background layer. So I can drag it over as well. So I'm going to drag over the original background layer, put that down here. So this looks like, well, obviously it's solid. Well, let me tell you, you can also use a blend mode to get rid of the black. So watch this. If I go to normal here at the top of the layers panel and change it to screen, see that also gets rid of it. But now you can see there's a little bit of a haze out here. Can you see? Because it wasn't quite jet black. So I really don't like that method for this particular option. It's not working for me. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. This one's not perfect either because it's got some weirdness here, some grays that are coming through. And so maybe I want to fix that as well. So let's do the same thing on it. Let's make all the darks disappear by putting it into screen mode. And look, you end up with a very good selection. Now, the neat thing about this is, is that after you're done, you can do some other things to it. Um, there are some puppet warps you can do. Let me show you how to do that. I'm going to duplicate this layer so I have a copy of it. I'm going to turn off the original. And I'm going to go up to Edit and Puppet Warp. And what Puppet Warp does is you can put pins where you want to pin things down. And then you can uh, maneuver other pins to warp this. So I'm going to put a pin here. I'm going to put a pin here. I'm going to put a pin here. And if I take this pin over here on the left, I can curl this up how I want it. <laughs> I can uh, take some of these things and move them over just warping them how I want because they're little tiny ones it does it individually obviously I can also squish this some more I can take this end and maybe point it in more and make kind of squish so it's starting to look like some weird animal once you're done you just hit the checkbox or enter to complete that transformation and you end up with obviously a weird looking animal I don't know what that is anyway but you can illustrate your smoke into all sorts of shapes that way. Anyway, this one's a great method for extracting those things. And see if you can use it in your project. And that's it for this video.